All right, we're kind of in trouble here. We're down to the last pip, so I gotta see if she can help me or not. I don't even know if that's the outcome here. It is what she gave me the money for, too. Good as it's gonna get. Gotta go up here. The fabricator. Make it, 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 make it. There we go. She did say she'd kill me if I didn't do it. So. I do like not getting killed. Ah. I get a drive complete just for having done that. I do think I want the plus one of engineer skills. I just want more bonuses so that things are easier because then I can do more as nice as the perks themselves might be I just got two upgrade points it's a big leap at least the money's worth it there he dropped the ship mine core onto the galley table with an emphatic bang. Anakita spins around from where she's been poring over some documents on her slate. Holy shit, sleeper. Did you actually land a ship mine? She rushes over and hefts the huge cylinder, turning it back and forth. Well, shit, it might actually work. She smiles wider than you've ever seen. Where did you get it? I built it. Built it? Well, well, you are full of surprises. Ankita bangs on the galley wall. Hear that, Amber? The sleeper got you a good... The sleeper got you a new ship mind. The sound echoes down the ship's passages. You have to admit, being in a small space with Ankita when she's ex this excited is a little intimidating. Ankita puts the ship mind back on the table. I'll start the process of fitting it as soon as I can. I might need your help with some of it. She heads back towards the counter to grab her slate. This isn't the only good news today, either. Looks like my good karma is finally coming in. He throws the slate onto the table and spins it so you can see the screen. Take a look at this. You see a list of names and numbers. Nothing that exciting. Along, for, along with what looks like a transit time table. I found them. The thieves? Exactly. Well, the thief. Singular. She points at a name on the list. Or more specifically, Ashton Cade. It was his past that we used was used to access Amber and slice the ship mind. I thought he might have been killed or robbed, his past stolen, but it turns out he crossed the Founder's Gap the very next cycle. Founder's Gap. That big rift in the station. You can't cross it without the Founder's Ferry. She leans back in her seat. I know some of the crew over at the ferry, old Mercs, used to run in an outfit I worked with. I saw them in the Overlook, and they mentioned they saw Ashton crossing. I checked the manifest, and there he was. Looks suspicious. He hasn't said a word since the theft, and anyone wanting to hide out might head to the Greenway to go and go to ground. She flexes. He won't get far, though. There's no real docks out there, only a couple of jetties in the wastes. Going after him? Not yet. First, I want to find the ship mine. I want to fit the ship mine. She pauses. But maybe you could help me out. Sure, how? It's like this. I head over there, especially in Amber. He'll spot me a mile off and go underground. He'll find a way to slip the station or bury himself so deep in the waste no one will ever find him. But you. Ashton doesn't know you. All I need is for you to go there and sniff around. Not at the commune. Not the stacks. He will have he will have gone to the edges, the margins, the wild places. That's what Ashton likes. You see him? You locate him? Ping me on this. She hands you a calm, a calm earpiece. Seeing as this is Merc work, I'll be happy to give you Merc pay. She shifts in her seat. The thing is, I haven't got much left, so how about I how about I tell the boys who run the ferry to give you a discount? I know it's not much, but once I grab this coward, I'll pay up. 200 cryo, nothing less. That's two, that's two doses. 
Right now it's just a fairy discount. What do you say? She meets your eye. Okay. She gives you a, a heavy whack on the shoulder. Good. I owe you. She lifts the ship mind up onto her shoulder with worrying ease. I'm gonna go get this fitted into Amber's core. You get any info, any sense of where Ashton's hiding, let me know. She goes to turn and then stops. And once again, sleeper, thank you. I appreciate it. Ankita stops off into the guts of Amber with the ship mind, leaving you in the galley. You glance around, a sudden nervous energy descending at what is to, uh, descending at what is to come. You never thought you'd get work as a mercenary, but then again, it seems the eye is full of surprises. Well. At least we've made good progress there. I've got 50, yeah, we got another point. It's good to have. So where are we going next? Repairing condition with scrap. I did talk about that being a pretty interesting thing to be able to have. Oh, it requires two points to get that though. Do I want to save up that long? It might be worth it. Getting energy from engage actions is also good because it reduces how much f eating I have to do, but it's only a chance. You never know how much it'll happen. Getting cryo is also useful. I'm old, I might hold out for one more point just because it can be very useful to have... Uh, all of your dice. But being able to repair myself would be great. Otherwise, it's very expensive. But it's probably still not good enough to to hold off entirely. <clears throat> so I'm screwed if I can't do this and I can't do this, right? Yeah, it has to match. <clears throat> so that's not good. Because that I'm on my last, I'm out of time. The person tracking me is gonna arrive. And we're gonna and we're gonna see what the consequences for that are. Apparently, hopefully not me just dying immediately. Here's the other time limit we gotta deal with. Let's see. Intuit is not a good negative, but this is helpful. Hey, plus two. And I got a scrap item. That's good. Might want to hold on to those so I can use them to repair now instead of selling them. But what do I want to use my one for? Okay, so I'm, I'm ahead of his nerve, so that's good. I guess it's safe in here, so I, I, if I can find a one, I can go eat, do it on that. This is a decent place to spend these. Plus one encrypted key. Unlock the, st the station's aging mag locks. The issue is, do I know of another place to spend one of those? Yeah, all the agents just require points. Wait, it's building up again? I thought we- Oh, we still have to work on beating him. We have a- we're developing a method. Until then, he'll still hurt me. So I still- I still can't get away with just spending those points whenever I want to. It's called a sealed door, but it's definitely not sealed anymore. I need to get another ship mine still. So right now this ship's gone. Can I break in? Nope. Q. 
can't break in here. It just costs 60. 60 that I don't currently have. I think I just need to sleep and see what happens to me. <clears throat> Get a little more tired every day. One, three, and five. Sure miss having more points. The cynical bounty hunter, Ethan. Look at the way he's dressed. Hold it there, sleeper. Comes a voice behind you. Don't you run. Stay still. Good. Good. A hand pats your coat down. You know your master's voice. Ethan spins you around. He's wearing a wide smirk and a slick jacket, and you immediately know that he's terrible news. You got all the way out here, then stayed put? He laughs, a cruel laugh. That a sleeper thing? You're my first. You barely hear him. You've noticed the handgun he has leveled at your chest. It's hard to take your eyes off it. He reaches down with his other hand and slips some kind of ring out of his belt loop without taking his eyes off you. Make it to the eye, though. That's pretty good. This place isn't so bad. Bars, markets, people. I pull most of my contracts out of asteroid caves or off of godforsaken moons. He spits the ring. He splits the ring into two perfect circles. It's hard to hit civilization when there's so much space to pass through. Who are you? Just a freelancer on contract. He reaches over to slide the rings around your wrists. Go easy. Let him? Good. You've got the idea. He grins. It's over. Ethan nudges you to start walking. To the ship and home, he whistles. Going easy. You stumble down the corridor, your hands behind you, your mind racing. Please, stop. Don't debase yourself by begging, please. Ethan pulls a sharpshooter's earplug out, then pops it, in, pops it back in. Consider these deaf ears. Ethan yawns and continues to nudge you down the corridor. Shame to come all the way out here just to head back to SNARP right away. That track of yours makes it too quick. Was hoping you put up a bit more of a chase, you know. A running battle through the bright market, maybe, or a hold out on the low end. There's a few establishments I would have enjoyed checking out while I asked around. You walk on in silence for a little longer, desperately trying to think of a way to escape. That SNARP tracker will be the death of you. Hey, I have an idea. Ethan interrupts your thoughts. How about on the way back to the, sh the ship, we stop for a drink? I'm buying. He laughs at his joke. That's exactly what I want to have happen, because they're people that might have my back. Let's see. Stay silent. <clears throat> Although, muses Ethan, I've got myself thinking, what's the rush here? Here we are in one of the lo most lawless joints in, sur in the surrogate systems. And we're heading for the exit. He pauses, and you trudge on in silence. Okay, here's the idea. Starts Ethan. You and me, we make a little agreement. Here are the terms. He turns you to face him. You run, or leave, or try to abandon the eye, I shoot you. You plot, scheme, you try to kill me, I shoot you. But, he smiles, you come meet me at an establishment of my choice every few cycles, and you pay my tab? I don't shoot you. He pauses. You don't pay my tab. He rattles his handgun. You get the idea. I get it. Okay, then. That sounds to me like a deal. He stretches. You know, I really thought I was tr going to have to kill you, but this is so much better. He clicks something at his belt, and the rings release it from your wrists. I'm going to see if I can find my old, my old stool at the compressor club. Come see me there. He aims the handgun at you, squinting down the sight. Let me remi just remind you, that body of yours is one big tracker. So don't even think about leaving the eye. I'll know. Ethan turns and strides off down the corridor, slipping his handgun away. The mix of relief and terror you feel is overwhelming. What are you going to do? Well. He made choices.
If I manage to pay his tab, he'll leave me alone. Wait for Ethan to run up a tab. Where is he? You see Ethan at a distance, shouting from the bar for more drinks. The spill isn't going to be small, is it? Uh, so he's it, he's a new cost on top of the cost of your medicine, which is already expensive. So fuck this guy. All right, did I? Ah, uh, I didn't roll a four, so I can't say I can't continue down down the disable my tracker path. They're being a dick about this. Okay, let's study the winter and get focused on that for now. Before this time limit goes away. Come on, five. If I can get one more goal, then I can get my thing I want. Neutral outcome. Ah, uh, it's 50-50. Yes. Flip that coin. Nah. Well, can't go that clean. These are turning into some quick cycles because I just can't do accomplish that much more. Okay. Soon I'll be bartending for money, probably. Here's my big way of eating. I gotta get things put together. I gotta get this tracker up before it makes me pay his tab. And I also need to save up enough money to buy a dose. Having spent a lot of it helping her out. <laughs> At least that's over with, and so it gave me the points. I rolled a four. Now I've got to lose my only good roll today. This gets down to the wire. It actually gets scary when you start losing your your entire ability to interact. Because of how low energy you get. Alright, let's finish this, please. Please give me a skill point. Not yet, I don't think. As you enter the bay, Fang is nowhere to be seen. The banks of servers and machines blink out of the dark in staccato rhythms, unseeing eyes of the station's digital ghosts. Shitheads! Fang's voice echoes from behind a stack, followed by the hammer of a fist on a metal casing. These snaky shitheads! Who's snaky? Sleeper! Fang's smiling head pops out from behind a stack. Just the emulated consciousness I've been eager to see. Just the emulated consciousness I've been eager to see. Come back here. You pick your way between the thrumming stacks, trying not to trip on the loose bundles of cables that blanket the dark floor. Feng is sat in, in front of a set of monitors mounted to a stack. Tell me, sleeper, what do you see here? Feng waves a monitor to his side, glowing with pale lists of information. You lean in closer, looking for the links in the data. The tables seem to be filled with personal information, names, genders, dates, ID numbers, all the markers of institutional records. Shitheads? Feng laughs. Ah, maybe not all of them, but what kind of shitheads? Solheim. Bingo! He taps on the terminal. I pulled these from the old data you brought in. All employees of the eyes original all employees of the eyes original owners and he leans past you and scrolls the, the list down. This one, this is a snaky shithead. He stabs at the screen with a finger. His name reads Harden Hurst. Friend of yours? Ben gives you a sideways look. Funny you should say that, sleeper. He drags a stool out behind him and motions for you to sit. 
There just so happens to be a Hardenhurst in Havenage. He waits for your reaction. In Havenage. That's right. He's right here on the station now. Fang leans back in his chair. Just think about it. Decades ago, Harden worked on this station as a... Fang leans across to look at the monitor. Senior Strategic Operations Executive. Fang raises his eyebrow at you. At you. Our Harden was keeping the money coming for in for Solheim. He, de he defined priority growth initiatives by making sure the extractors they contacted, the contracted, were hooked into a system that outsourced all the risk and keep the pro and kept the profit. Good old Harden shuttled thousands of palladium rush workers into a infrastructure, which meant that their cut of the work they did went straight back into Solheim. How do you know this? I grew up here, sleeper. This is my history. I am a child of the Collapse. Feng turns back to his screen, staring hard at the strings of code flicking by. Before I was born, my parents were Solheim contractors. They ate in Solheim canteens, worked on Solheim ships, they breathed Solheim air, and slept in Solheim beds. Feng's voice rises as he speaks, his hands fists on the terminal edge. And the work that paid for that existence? The cycles of hard extraction out in the belt? Solheim took their cut. This was a company town, so to speak, and my parents were just another in the long line of freelance contractors willing to risk their lives for a shot at anything other than poverty. Disposable. Freelance contractors, quote, 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 because you can't make it, can't let anyone be a real employee. Employees have rights, so nobody's an employee anymore. This guy, stabbing at Harden once again with his finger, strategized all that, did the sums, and then somehow, thousands and thousands of cycles later, is still going. Still here, crawling in the walls like some shithead snake. He survived the revolution. Surely it can't be him. Ben relaxes a little. Who knows? He turns to you and smiles. So, we're gonna go find out. Harden is now a big shot in the shipyards, just a few degrees back from the eye from here. Around the eye from here. Feng brings up a map of the lower eye. Havenage might be born out of Erlin's revolutionary zeal, but a flat hierarchy it is not. Harden happened to float to the top. Feng zooms in on the far yards. Feng, Feng grimaces. That thing. The, th uh, the thing is, I don't have access to those systems. The shipyard crew is pretty paranoid that they don't like anyone from systems digging around to their stuff. Plus, we have more than, than just the name of a Solheim executive. We need proof. Feng holds up a thumbnail-sized drive. That's where this little creation of mine comes in. I call it a ripper worm. He turns the drive between his fingers. It'll rip through any digital storage and spin out a silken, a silken thread of filtered data. This one is set on the scent of Hardin Hurst. He hands it over. Getting into the compound might be tricky. Feng puts a hand on your shoulder. But you, however, have a particular knack for uh, remote access. I don't. I don't have any points in interfacing. Feng grins. If you can extract yourself a Havenage cipher from a Havenage agent, they sometimes carry them among their data caches, you can crack open the compound's network and slot the worm in slot the worm in through any open port. You never even need to go near the shipyards. So what do you say? You up for it? What's in it for me? Rooting out a corrupt snake not enough? Find the information and I'll start work on that tracker of yours. I, why aren't you already working on it from the last thing? I, I need it done. <laughs> I'm supposed to be there already. Bang scratches at his chin. Anything the worm gets, I'll send it back here to me. It'll send it back here to me. There's something wrong here, and I am to get to the rotten core of it. You leave Feng, digging through the data, among the wires and machines of the old station. As you work out, as you walk out, you try to imagine the eye as it once was, a vast machine running smooth and strong, directed by people like Harden. A vast Solheim-built machine into which thousands poured from the surrogate systems looking for a new life. The hope of a better future, engineered to line someone else's pockets, 
It's an idea you're intimately familiar with. You think of Hardin, still alive, still part of his of this place, and wonder if the past has ever truly passed. Well, fuck. Just to save my tracker, dick. I'm gonna be in trouble here. Uh. Well, nothing's becoming what I thought it would be. I guess we poke at the winter light? Please? Coin flip? Come on, man. I have no points. I need this coin flip. Thank you. So nothing else. I'm not gonna. I'm not about to make money with a one and a two. That was never gonna be good for me. Squeezed into the office of, at the entrance of the yard, you lay out everything you have on your winter light across the metal, metal desk. Your makeshift forensic notes glow on Dragos's old writing slate, overlapping lines and scrawled annotations. A set of drone scans fill the small terminal with a spectrum of colors, a heat map of damage and decay. A crumpled printout from the off office ship's registry lies beside them. Synthetic paper so thin it almost it's almost transparent. Hmm. So I got the printout? A plain list shows the registration history of the winter light. The gaps between entries tantalizingly opaque. Its first registration was a couple of thousand cycles ago on this very station, logged at the central hub. From here, the registry tells the story of a busy ship, one that rarely stared on, stayed on station for more than a few cycles, and often took on voyages that kept it away from the eye for up to a hundred cycles. A winter light... The winter light got little rest. Look at the monitor. Reactor failure. That's the verdict that anyone would have returned after a cursory glance at these stacked heat maps of the remains of the winter light. On the terminal screen, the ship is shown in section, blotches of color marking the approximate damage the ship sustained. Dominating the view is a single blood-red rose radiating from the ship's fraction drive. A simple story, a catastrophic failure of the drive core leading to a fatal hull breach. A well-documented failure, likely brought on by wear or misuse. But you aren't looking at the rows of the reactor. You're looking at a smaller... Huh. A smaller, paler mark. One that might be easy to miss at first glance. It is thumbprint size and delicately placed over the control servos for the ship's main external airlock. It suggested a controlled, shaped explosion. One designed to punch through the hole and allow access to the airlock from the outside. You're looking at it because it is troubling you. Look at the slate. Your attempts at a reconstruction of the winter light before its fatal accident consists of a series of overlapping sketches and diagrams showing possible layouts and configurations of the gutted, of the gutted cutter. There was no off-the-shelf model. It was, uh, this was no off-the-shelf model. It was heavily modified. Parts replaced with inventive configurations. The new retrofitted in the new retrofitted into the old. Handmade joints and reconditioned filters. This was someone's pride and joy. A lifetime project kept running with care and intuition. It also contained a set of hidden compartments. You missed them at first where the hole had been thickened. The corners rounded to disguise the charge, the change, but they are there. An old ship, many cycles under its belt, carefully maintained. A reactor failure preceded by a carefully concealed external entry. A suite of hidden compartments, tucked away. This was the winter light, and this was its story. But that's not the full story. Because there's something else. It is little more than a list, a tiny chunk of data you're able to pull from the ship's systems. The main systems were fried, of course, but the winter light had a separate system, one tucked away in one of its hidden compartments, armored, airwalled. This list, the only recover recoverable piece from the whole system, is a partial inventory. It details the contents of the hidden compartments. Some of it you recognize it, and some of it you don't. Ship mind ROMs, shimmer, cryo chain codes, and the final entry, passenger, 
sleeper. You stare at the list on the terminal and try not to think about what it, it was like arriving here in the cold for so long, half frozen in the, in the freight container. Had the sleeper been smarter? Luckier? How would they convince the Winter Light, a smuggler ship, if you ever saw one, a smuggler ship if you ever saw one, to extract them from S and Arp? Luckier. You laugh. There had been no remains found in any of the Winter Light's compartments. You had checked. They weren't so lucky, you guess. Not in the end. You hold up a vial of stabilizer in the la in uh, to the light. This was all. This was all you find in their compartment. A parting gift from S and Arp. Well, it won't go to waste now. You put it back in your pocket. The thought still bothers you, though. Two ships carrying sleepers coming into the same yard. Two, one after the other. That feels wrong. You flick back and forth between data data sets on the terminal, thinking, and you see that thumbprint again. The mark of someone trying to get in. Someone who entered the winter light with precision and speed, and when they were done, left the reactor to clean up the rest. The thought of that person makes you shiver. Suddenly the office door creaks open. Drago stands in the doorway, staring at the equipment and notes you've assembled. What's all of this? He snatches the slate from the desk, faster than you realize he could move. You running an investigation here? What am I paying you for? The drone on his shoulder starts whining shrilly, his anger passing to it through his implants. Where's the ship from? Leave this alone. He starts shaking his head. I know you have a lot of questions, but this isn't the way. He turns away, muttering to himself, This is the last thing I need. The ship had a sleeper on it. Dragos freezes, suddenly angry. What did you say? He pushes past you to look at the terminal, at the list. He shakes his head. So what? Aren't all of you trying to escape? You're lucky it was you who made it out alive, not them. He folds his arms indignantly. Drago seems to steady himself and then turns back to you. The heat map of the reactor failure reflected in his headset's glassy eyes. I've given you a place to stay. I've given you work. I've... He stumbles over his words, unsure what to say. There's plenty others who would have sold you out, turned you in, but not me, no. I know. He softens. <clears throat> Look, you've helped me too. He quiets the drone. I've done well by you, and you've returned the favor. He straightens up and clears his throat. But this obsession you have with this ship isn't going to work for me. I can't have you making my clients nervous. I can't have you digging up whatever it is you are after. He sighs. So you can't work here anymore. What about the winter light? He reaches over and switches the monitor off. Forget about the damn ship. You have enough to keep you up. Dragos reaches across across you and flicks off the terminal. As the light of the monitor dies, a kind of eerie calm falls on both of you. Whatever it wa this was, it is done. You made it out, sleeper. That means you have to move on. Someone killed that ship and its crew. And you want to meet them? He shakes his head. We are done here. In the dark, Dragos' headset glints, and you wish for a moment you could see his eyes and meet them. Maybe then he would understand. You get up from the desk, and Dragos gathers the notes, stuffing them in a, into a pocket of his overalls. He holds the door for you, his headset and expressionless as always. You can stay in the container, I won't take that from you. Don't come back. His tone is final, definite. With an edge of disappointment. You walk out of the office and then out of the yard, not stopping to look back. You leave the yard, thumbing the vial in your pocket, knowing that this at least guarantees you a little more time. And as you walk, your mind once again drifts to that person who killed the Winter of Light and whether or not the person will come for you. Cool, another threat to be worried about on top of the other ones. Self-repair. Upgrade. Nice. 
I've got that now. But we're not friends anymore. So I'm not going to be seeing him for a while or ever again. Hmm. We should learn how much self-repair is self-repair. So it's right here. Oh. It's one day. Wow. Alright. I think I'm gonna wanna go all in, honestly. I should I should just Man. That's disappointing. I wish I'd bought something else. Alright, well, we're stabilized the good way. And now I'm now I'm actually gonna get five dice again. And we can use that to get some real income, and then I can just go back to buying stabilizer. I'm happy that we got stabilizer from a surprise event. I have so far not had to buy one. I am starving. Additional problem. Hey buddy, I really gotta make some money between these visits. Okay, my dice are 2-1, two, 2-5-2. Two, two. Lots of twos, too many twos. Lots of du lots of low rolls in general. So I gotta worry about the consequences of failure, generally speaking. My primary goal is still to try to disable the tracker. And I have enough stabilizer now that I don't have to worry about buying the surgery stuff right away. He wants me to go back to hacking, and hacking causes me to get attacked by the thing. Most of these things are done. How do I track his leads? Hmm. There's a whole, whole lot less going on here, right? I can, I can get become known about the shipyard. I can work at the bar. Hmm. So when I, tr I track Feng's objective, it doesn't actually show up anywhere. And the description does description the description of the quest doesn't help me either. Hmm. I think this says I get a skill point just for buying a, a, a vial of stabilizer. This is a short term goal. And how to get, get how to get G roll caps. I think I need to get out of here for most of the stuff, so I just need to make some money so I can get past the door. I can try working at the bar, but, uh... Don't have the best dice rolls available. I think I'm just gonna have to deal with it. God, four out of my... F four out of my five dice being the worst possible... Uh, category is pretty brutal. How am I doing? This can't keep up. Really? Are we gonna get unanimous? Wow. Okay. So where's the asshole? He's halfway up to his thing. 
Gonna have to pay his tab. Man. I'm gonna be on... <laughs> How much is it gonna cost? Okay. A six, a four, a three. Not the worst. They gave me something to work with this time. These guys are here. So I have the option to buy scrap again if I want to. So I have an RNG chance of getting something okay out of it, but that's about it. I don't think that's what I want to be doing right now. It's another gamble. And I already get to worry about this guy's tab. God, how much is it going to cost? Might as well try to finish this? Oof. Not ideal, now I'm starving. Hmm. Oh, fuck. You can somehow get negative food in one day? Not really how starving works, but okay. There goes my freaking coin flips I was winning, I guess. Come on, man. No way. Wow, my probability full on flipped on me. Now I'm losing stuff that would just impro- like, now I'm losing improbably. Man. Alright. Well, that sucked. The gear roll slides from the bottle into the lumpy, recycled glass. A pale, grassy yellow under the Overlook's warm lights. The spacer nods and takes the drink, bringing it up to their face in both hands like an offering bowl. This is the good stuff. The stuff Tala says is aged in wooden casks, stored in some closed-off part of the old station among corroded wires and softly looping systems. Though sometimes it's hard to tell if Tala's joking. Either way, you like pouring the stuff. It gets on your fingers, and if you rub them together, you can smell the mossy drink. Cut through with aniseed, mushrooms, wood, and the alcohol as the alcohol evaporates. You like those who order it, too. The aged G-roll is, is kept beneath the bar. Open to order... Open to order only by those who know it's there. Like the quiet spacer sitting at the bar right now. Watch the spacer. They're far away enough. They're far enough away that you can freely watch them as you as you close the bottle and tuck it beneath the bar. You call them a spacer because they bear the hallmarks: pale, back suited, bird boned, and hunched beneath beneath the weight of the station's spin gravity. But the closer you look, the less you see a type: pale eyes, almost gray but kind. Delicate fingers that lightly drum the bar as if it was an instrument. A shock of black hair almost covered, almost covering a forehead scar. Scars are something you've learned to value. They're what marks, you, marks out your body from the hundreds, maybe thousands, who knows, of similar models that rolled up on S and Arp's biolabs. You find yourself rubbing one of your, one on your forearm, a rough little split. Something that, on good days, you might think of as a mark of defiance. Suddenly you hear a heavy clunking at the door. It creaks open and a huge cylindrical metal tank tumbles through, slamming into the floor. Shit! Talad breezes it from behind. A whirl of hair and bright eyes. Shit, shit, shit. Tala? Sleeper! She ducks behind the bar and comes over. Can you help me with this? You look at the huge metal tank suspiciously. How'd you get up? How'd you get that up here? Hella puts a hand on her hip. Are you going to help me or what? 
You come around the bar and, and get on one side of the tank. Okay, says Tala. On my count, one, two, three. They kind of like sporadically forget to put a space behind uh, after a quotation mark. <clears throat> Just noticing that throughout. You both heave the tank up to standing, somehow. You hold it in place, struggling to keep it steady. Where's this going? In the back, comes a voice from behind the tank. Somehow you manage to lug the huge thing into the back room, where you place it in one corner, dwarfing the rest of the contents in the cramped space. As you do, you hear a crunch. You stand back and look at the expired rations oozing out, of this, out from under the tank. Ah, oh, shit. Tala looks at you apologetically. I know you liked those. Good riddance. I actually never had one. Tala smiles. Oh, good. I thought you, I thought maybe liking expired rations was some kind of sleeper thing. You push the crushed rations to one side. That's the end of that. Tala looks exhausted and rubs her shoulders. Francis, I swear to... Fran Francis? Francis, I mentioned him already. My guy on the door. Dealers with deals with suppliers. Tall. She sighs. He was supposed to be back from Etienne's up in the in the Greenway by now. But with our G-roll... Back with our G-roll. She leans against the tank. It seems like he's got lost again. Or joined the Haifa Commune. We need that G-roll. There's four other bars near here. And the space are sure as hell don't come to the overlook for the ambience. She looks through the open door to check if anyone can hear her. She knocks on the hollow tank. So I'm taking matters into my own hands. She smiles. Welcome, sleeper, to the Overlook Distillery. You look around the dank back room. Need some work. She picks up some, fate, uh, at some paint flaking from the metal walls. Well... I might need some help, though. She shrugs. You up for it? She knocks on the tank again. Could be fun. Happy to help. Okay. She grabs you by the shoulders. I'm excited. She turns around and looks at the tank. I reckon we chop this thing in half. One half for fermentation, and the other we turn into a still. We'll still need to gather the ingredients. She turns back and looks at you. You look more like a chopper than a gatherer. She smiles. So how about you build the still and tub while I work on the rest? Oh, wait. Sleeper, I have an idea. Tal is grinning now, and it makes you nervous. To make up for the rations, how about we put a kitchen in here, too? A kitchen? Uh-huh. I always wanted to serve food. She turns back to the tank. This is going to be great, she says to herself. You look at the dented tank in the bare room. At least she has vision. Tala nudges you out the back room and closes the door. As you go to the, uh, back to the bar, you hear the banging and thumping begin. The spacer finishes up her drink, uh, finishes up their drink and nods in your direction as they leave. You can't quite tell if it's a gesture of sympathy or good luck. So much for a quiet shift. Well. Did I get a thingy? No. I, g I gained a drive. Improve the overlook. Try to set up a distillery. I like how involved it is. Like, I, I like that we're working together on a project. That's kind of neat. Uh, I really need to disable my tracker, though. This needs to make me a lot of money. Hey, maybe we can get that guy that works the food stall to cook in here. Just kind of bring everyone together. Mm -hmm.